All right, greetings everyone. This is Eric, uh, founder and CEO of Cubicle Investing. Definitely check out my website at cubicleinvesting.com. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm often asked the question, uh, so Eric, how, how are you able to be so consistent in your trading, right? How are you able to win more than you actually lose? Because I do have losses, right? I mean, there are times where I will have a loss, but uh, one of the things I came to recognize over the years is that once you learn how to lose, <laughs> once you learn how to lose, right? Uh, the uh, Your trading becomes that much easier when you are able to accept that you're not gonna be right every time in every trade. And the key is taking small losses and taking losses quickly, right? But what I did over the years was I actually did some research um, looking at uh, roughly, well, not roughly, looking at 23 years worth of historical SPX uh, data, right? Because I'm primarily an XPX zero DTE, DTE standing for days to expiration. That's what I primarily trade, you know, uh, zero DTE uh, SPX options. Although, I mean, they're, they're relatively new, you know, they, they didn't always have uh, daily expiration dates for the SPX. But nonetheless, I did, uh, I, I pulled down 23 years worth of historical SPX data. Right. And so what I did was I just was curious. I wanted to see, you know, based upon the uh, percent change, right? Because, you know, they, they are essentially, they essentially, uh, when I say they, you know, most websites that keep track of, of market information, they keep, you know, they, 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 uh, they keep a record of the high, the low, the last or the closing price. And what was the change between the actual change between you know, the closing prices for the SPX and then what that percentage was, right? And so what I did was I created these various buckets, uh, as you can see here, um, on the upside and also on the downside. And so I wanted to see how many occurrences over this, you know, over this 23 year period that the SPX had a, had a change that the percent change of the SPX's closing prices over that particular period fell into this bucket here. So greater than, you know, of course, 0% because, you know, nobody cares about something that doesn't move, right? So greater than zero, but less than or equal to 0.5%. And so as you can see here, um, over this 23 year period, uh, the majority of the time, the the percent, the the differential, the percent differential between the various closing prices is less than or equal to 0.5 percent, right? So 46 or roughly 47 percent of the time over this period, and then when you look at the next bucket, greater than 0.5 percent, but less than or equal to 1 percent you get your next largest uh, number of occurrences, right? So if you look at just these three buckets here, we're talking about greater than, you know, uh, 0% and less than or equal to 1.5%. Uh, so the number of occurrences, uh, it's roughly 87% of the time that the SPX, uh, when it moves to the upside, it's going to be less than or equal to 1%, a, a 1.5% move, right? Looking at the closing prices over this 23 year period. I did the same thing to the downside. And again, the downside, pretty much the same thing, right? The same thing, uh, roughly 84% of the time when the, when the SPX moves to the downside, you know, it's not going to move no more than one point. It's not going to drop no more than 1.5%. 83% of the time over this 23 year period. Now you will, of course, you will have some outliers, right? For example, you know, you'll get these, 
these significant rises or, they, or these significant drops here. This here is a scattered, uh, scattered diagram of the same time period. And as you can see here, you know, um, so we got the upper band is 1.5 and the lower band is negative 1.5. As you can see here, most of the occurrences fall within that, within that, uh, within that band, right? And again, you have these outliers here. And so knowing that information, 23 years worth of data, you're talking about over 6,000 data points, right? Uh, I pretty much know looking at, uh, each day, each previous day's closing price, um, you know, where I need to place my, my short strike either on the call side or either on the put side to have a high probability, an extremely high probability of walking away with the money, right? Because I, I primarily sell credit spreads. You know, there are, I mean, I do buy options as well, but I primarily am a, am a options uh, seller, right? So I sell, uh, option contracts. And so I can just, I can come in here, you know, and just quickly, you know, create a spreadsheet, which, which I've done here, um, you know, and implement the math and just, you know, essentially put in each day's, uh, previous, uh, the previous day's closing price and kind of have a crystal ball, if you will, as to, you know, uh, the, uh, the threshold or the area in which the SPX or the, the value in which the SPX is highly unlikely to go beyond just based upon looking at, you know, the, uh, the number of occurrences in these various buckets. And so I use this information to, uh, to be an informed trader, you know? And so every day I come in, Oftentimes what I'll do is it, I'll just place, you know, a, uh, a line at the 0.5% mark, the, the 1% mark, the 1.5% mark on the upside and also the same on the downside. And then I just look at the price action and just place my, my short strike and my long strike, um, that makes up my, my vertical uh, credit spread, whether it be on the put side or call side. And, uh, and for the most part, man, I, you know, I win the majority of my trades, as long as I allow the SPX to make a, uh, to make its initial move. And then from that move, I begin to determine whether it be on the upside, on the call side, or to the downside on the put side, because I always trade in the direction in which the market or which the SPX is moving. So if the SPX is going to the upside, I'm looking to go on the call side. And conversely, if it's moving to the downside, I'm looking to go on the put side and just get beyond the reach of the SPX. And so essentially that's how I'm able to win the majority of my trades. Now, of course, do I win them all? No, I, I don't win all my trades, but I win the majority of my trades. And when I do lose, the losses are very small and, I'm, and I take them quickly. And when I do take a, a loss, I'll normally get right back in the market. And if it's going to the upside, I'll just get to a higher, a higher level or a higher value, um, based upon, you know, looking at the, the number of occurrences when it comes to the percent change of the closing prices. So that's how I'm able to essentially, you know, uh, win the majority of my trades.